Hi, beautiful. Are you getting married or do you enjoy planning your wedding that may never happen? Me too. You may have asked yourself, well, how am I gonna wear my hair to my wedding? What's gonna look the most timeless? And the most important question of all, what is gonna make me look like I am living my extra life while walking down the aisle? These are the three questions we all ask ourselves when picking our wedding hair. I've worked on countless brides in my lifetime. Let me just tell you, a lot of them get the wrong hairstyle. I do talk them out of it. However, a lot of them come to me wanting the ugliest I've ever seen. I don't like that. Let's fix that, shall we? Think modern but timeless. That's the goal we're trying to achieve with our wedding hair. We're gonna start today's video by taking a trip down memory lane, just looking at some 80s wedding hair just for the f of it. And I feel like we just have to remember where we came from and how much we've progressed. And then after that, we'll go over some don'ts of wedding hair. Some things that I really don't like that people ask for all the time. And it's just honestly a little tasteless. And then after that, I'll let you guys know what my opinion of wedding hair is and the things you should do to your hair for your wedding day. I also think it's important to preface this video by saying these are just my opinions. So don't get mad if you disagree with something I said, okay? I love it. Okay. After you watch today's video, hopefully you'll be walking down the aisle living your extra, extra life. And that I think is really the goal of any bride. So with that all said, let's get it started. So let's begin checking out some iconic celebrity wedding hair from the 80s and also just a few randos that had some really interesting do's. Ah, here we are, the first image. If I were living in the 80s and getting married, I think that this is how my hair would be. Listen, she went for it and I really appreciate it. She said, tease it. And they said, is that enough? And she said, no, keep teasing. And they said, is that enough? And she said, no, keep teasing. I'll tell you when it's Done. And it was never done until the actual minute her wedding started and she walked right down the aisle and that is how she ended up like this. That's what I think happened at least. These 80s bangs were just the most wild thing, just blown out in every direction possible. She was hit by like 80 mile per hour winds it looks like and her hair just went whoosh all back and she let it stay there and then she hairsprayed it. Iconic. She's definitely living her extra life. Now we have Princess Diana. Yes, she had one of the most iconic 80s weddings. She went for a simple look to the point where it almost looked like she wasn't uh, attending her own wedding. It looks like the hairdo took three minutes to do, which I bet it didn't. I'm sure it took like 10 hours to do. This haircut, got the shaggy, uh, I don't know. It's kind of like a weird bowl cut, like a mullet moment. I usually like mullets, but not on, not on, not on, her, not on Princess Diana. It wasn't really flattering at all. I would have liked to see it out of her face. I feel like it would have really opened up her face. This is just giving me nothing. Oh, oh, oh. now that's what I wanted. It looks like she has a faux hawk going on. Um, I don't think that was the idea behind this, I'm sure. But I mean, she said, tease it to the gods. I want height. And they said, yes, ma'am, I'll do that for you. And she got that. She did that. She has the flower crown with the obnoxiously large veil. It's all just together making this wonderful 80s glam rock princess wedding hair. And I'm here for it. Now we have Cindy Crawford. Give me all the tool you have in this fabric store. And they said, but that's a lot of tool. And she said, I know, I want it all. And she got it, girl. She got the entire fabric store of tool. I mean, wow. That's a dress, um, but we're not talking about that. Then she has this crown that looks like it's growing like crystallized salt formation. That's my best descriptor for that. And it's going across her forehead. It just looks uncomfortable, first of all. Then we have this high, high bun that looks like she threw her hair up in a hurry. It's just making this entire moment even that more spectacular because she has the most extra wedding dress with the most extra gloves and extra jewelry extra veil, and then her hair is just thrown up into a bun. And she still looks gorgeous, so listen, if you're gonna do it, <laughs> might as well go all the way. This woman said, let's take athleisure wear and make it into wedding wear. Um, This sweatband she has on her forehead might be useful because she might be a sweaty girl in her wedding day. I know it's a little stressful, I'm sure, I'm sure, you know? And she said, but I want a sweatband with a veil on it. And she got that exact thing that she was looking for. You go, girl. And then we got this perm's hair that was then teased out to then create this kind of nest, like a bird's nest, if you will, on the top of her head. I love it. Now we have Mariah Carey, who did this down moment. Looks like she washed her hair, put a little curling serum in, and then walked out of the door, which knowing Mariah Carey was not the case. I'm sure it took several hours to do this. 
hair and it was a flop. I mean, it doesn't look good. It doesn't. I don't really have much to say about it because it's just, holy sh that dress is crazy. Oh my God, that flower arrangement. Yep, that's Mariah Carey. That's what I expected from her. It looks like she's trying on the dress for the first time and she didn't do her hair and she's just trying it on, doing a fitting. And then she ended up walking down the aisle that day um, and getting married. I don't know. It just looks like they didn't do her hair. I don't know. This wedding party is looking like poodles. They look like poodles. I am not saying poodles are ugly by any means. I would never. But let's focus on the bride. The bride has this updo with this Snooky Jersey Shore poof with the bun. I actually enjoy that it's off her face. I think that it actually looks quite elegant in that sense. However, it looks like a nest in the damn back of her head. Again, another bird's nest. I feel like on your wedding day, bird's nests should not be there. But I actually think she looks kind of like the most put together out of everybody we've talked about so far. I like that little choker she has on with her beautiful decolletage out, quite elegant. And actually, what the f do I like this hair? I don't know what's going on right now. I guess she looks kind of cute for the 80s. Should we go with that? I don't know, good job, girl. You go, girl. And lastly, we have Heather Locklear marrying Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart, holy sh man, you went for it. Honestly, would marry him, it's fine. And then Heather Locklear said, let's do the least with my hair. And I actually think she kind of killed it. Obviously her hair is a little bit shredded. Um, she has a very, very short layering at the top that is then blown out to perfection underneath this like cascading crystal waterfall of a tiara crown. I don't know what you call it. It's kind of chic. I don't know. She kind of looks dope. It's fun. I'll take it, you know? Heather Locklear, you look divine, baby girl. And those gloves, now that I got that out of my system, let's do some don'ts of wedding hair. Don't do this with your hair when getting married. Let's do the don'ts. One of my favorite don'ts is braids, especially fishtail braids. Let's keep the fish in the water, babe. Let's not bring him into our hair. It doesn't look right. I don't know what it is about fishtail braids. There are some things you can wear fishtail braids to. It's festivals. But if you're a grown ass woman wearing a fishtail braid, I don't know. For some reason, I'm judging you. But also, again, live your extra life, meaning do whatever the f you want that makes you happy. But fishtail braids, <laughs> braids in general for weddings, it just looks like farmhouse vibes. I don't know. It's just weird to me. Here's a couple of images of braids that I hate. We have this crown, fishtail crown. It's kind of like a cute when you first look at it, you know, it's like, oh my God, so fun. But then, you know, she's going to look back on this in 10, 20 years and be like, what the f you let me do that to myself? Like it just doesn't look timeless or elegant in any which way. It just looks like you are stuck as a 12 year old girl. Like you had this imagination of getting married when you were 12 and having a fishtail braid and like you stuck with that and did it. It wasn't good. Then we have this photo. It's just like chunky fishtail, like laying on your shoulder. Like it's literally a dead salmon on your shoulder. Like, I don't know the braided crown area. It just screams childish and like daddy issues to me. I don't know if that's just me. It possibly may be, but I just don't love it. Next, we have the overly textured hair. It's mostly just updos that have way too much curl texture. You'll see. Here it is. Okay, so this was a trend, you know, 10 years ago. It was cool at the time, but let's stop. She's like, I want to look like I didn't do a lot to my hair. So let's make sure it's really textured. But then they just overdo the texture and it ends up in this like weird, overly textured moment. It just has way too much going on. It's so busy. It's like, where the f do I look? Like these little pearl flowers in her hair. And then she has this bun with the braids and the twisties and the texture. It's like, I can't breathe. It's too much hair. <gasps> like that's what my reaction would be if I saw her hair in real life. Here's another prime example of too much texture. It's like they did corkscrew curls on her entire head and then just pin that shit up and was like, this is modern, dude. This is some new stuff here. And then I'm just like, it's not, you're not doing anything. You're nothing about this is good. Then she has the braids going into the textured mess. And I'm like, Whoa, pick a style and stick with it. Up next, we have the bump. The bump is something I see nearly the most often out of every kind of ugly wedding hairstyle. The bump is always a driving force for those ugly wedding styles. Um, This is what I mean by the bump. <sighs> <laughs> the crown region that is just so voluminous. I get it if you have a bad head shape and you're trying to correct something, but it's just 
so weird. I don't know why it drives me crazy. It's just such a big, like it's like a, it's like a, for a lack of better words, sort of like a tumor on the back of their heads. Um, I apologize. I don't want to offend anybody there, but that's the only way I can really explain it. It just looks like a growth out of the top of the head. And I don't know why it's there. Let's just flatten that out a little bit, shall we? Again, this style is semi cute, but you lost me with the bump, the big bump on the back of her head. For some reason, every girl just goes to the bump when they're planning their wedding hair. They're like, I want the bump. I want more volume back here. What other day of your life have you ever wanted that? Why now? Why are you now choosing to have a bump on the back of your head on your wedding day? You're gonna have to look at these pictures forever, girl. I'm trying to save your life here. Now we have the tight curls, the crunchy tight curls. This is the result of showing a old school hairstylist a photo of beachy waves and you walk out of the salon looking like this and they say, it'll drop, it'll drop later. If somebody tells you your waves or your curls will drop later, they probably don't know what they're doing because there's many ways you can make waves stay in the hair and not have them super tight at first in order for them to drop. I used to hear that shit all the time in the salon. By the time you walk down the aisle, your waves will drop. Like, what, are we timing it? Are their waves gonna know when to drop? Like, the wedding bells start going off, they start, they just starts happening and the waves are like, oh, shit, it's our time. And they just drop down like, no. There's waves to make hair stay in place. It's called hairspray. It's called the right products. You gotta have holding products, put clips in before she walks on the aisle. Like this is what happens also when you spray the hair with hairspray and curl it and it gives you crunchy curls. They're just not good. They're ugly. First of all, we have the bump and the curls going at the same time and a little bit of like a twisted braid on the side. It's like, <gasps> whoa. <laughs> and like 10 pounds of hair extensions, but live your extra life, you know? I mean, they it looks like she was going for a wave moment and she got curls and she said, well, I guess we're going with it. Now we have the overly perfected chignon. It looks like a giant hanging from the back of your head. Why is your hair quaffed to perfection around a semicircle sock bun? <laughs> what the f it looks like a shrub growing out of the back of your head. Let the hair move, girl. It's so big. <laughs> like, this isn't the worst photo, actually. I get where they're going. I don't mind very quaffed hair. Listen, there's, there's time and place for it. This just doesn't seem like the optimal look for anybody. The weaved pieces on top of the extremely large chignon is a moment. It's not a moment that I'm here for. I'm sorry. It's gonna be a no for me, darling. It's just a lot. <laughs> now we have the bad headband. This just feels like culture appropriation to me. This girl just went to an Indian wedding and said, that is my look, and then stole the headpiece right from the bride. A white person in one of these, it just seems a little culture appropriate-y. It's also just like not cute. Kim Kardashian even did it. It's a little bit better. It's not as low. It doesn't feel as Indian wedding vibes to me, but it still doesn't need to be there for any real reason. Put a tiara on her, a crown. I think that would be better for you. And last but not least, one of the all time worst looks anybody can do to themselves in their wedding day is the sock bun. Do you remember the sock buns? It was a thing. Everybody found out you can use a sock to make a bun and every girl came to school with that damn sock bun and some of them even did it to their wedding day they even tried to dress it up with like a little bit of hair around the sides just to like really make it weddingy uh and it's a flop girl it does look very yummy like i would eat her hair it looks like a mix between chocolate and vanilla and like a caramel swirl going on in there delicious donut i would eat it um but i would not put it on my head for my wedding and that's all i have to say about the sock bun <laughs> i think that one kind of explains itself so that wraps up my don'ts for wedding hair glad we got that out of the way now let's check out the do's for wedding hair let's see what we got the headband the simple stylish headband if you will it's dainty it's small it just adds a little bit of extra oomph to the style. It's beautiful, it's elegant, and just screams, I'm living my extra life, but I also look like a bad who knows fashion. And then we have this headband with the pearls. That is a legit headband. It just screams timeless beauty to me. Just has a sort of elegance that says, again, I want you to look at me today because I'm gorgeous. And yes, I am that so I am gonna wear a sort of crown on my head and you're gonna watch me walk down the aisle and you're gonna watch it glimmer. And that's what that gives me. I love a good dainty headband. It's beautiful. Now we have what I like to call the cool girl wave. Now this is a wave that is not overdone. She looks like she got her hair smoothed out. However, they didn't overly style it, overly curl it. She has the perfect amount of volume in the back to make it kind of look a little 70s-ish. Still timeless, beautiful. And also she has that gorgeous dainty headband on. And this whole look is just, 
classic, timeless, and effortless. And I love it. And now this is even a little bit more wavy, but still effortless. I think it is very reminiscent of the time we're in right now. I think this could possibly not age well. This is the one that I think maybe you might look back on and be like, oh, well, I look like I rolled out of bed. But it is very modern, and I think the less is more approach is elegant. The headband, I think, is important for this look because the look is so plain and simple. I think you need to dress it up just a tiny bit with something you wouldn't regularly wear, which is the crystal headband or the pearl headband. Or a little tiara, you know? Why not? The easy updo, the beautiful effortless updo. This is how you do texture without looking like you overdid it. You see that bit that is coming back from her face is textured. It's not perfectly smoothed out, but it's not like curls going on the side of her head. None of that happening. I love this sort of creation they made with that pearl, almost like a necklace going through her hair. She even has a little bit of a braid in there, but I think it works. And then the bun is just chill. It's not so crazy overstyled, but it does look like wedding hair still. There is a fine line between a good low bun for a wedding and an overly styled one. This is how you do it right. Another beautiful updo. Not too much bump in the back. She still has that volume, but it's not like overly accentuated by this part and this part being pulled back tight with the really big bump in the back. It's kind of like an all overall volume. And I love that. She has a few pieces down the front. They're not perfect. They're very tousled. And then the bun in the back kind of just looks like she threw it up. But that little piece of jewelry just really ties it all together and gives you that real wedding hair style. I think this is a very modern look. Will it age perfect? I don't know. Know, but I do think it is great for the time. Sometimes it's okay to dress for the times. I think we can all agree that sometimes when you look back at wedding photos, who the f cares if it's like ridiculous? At least, you know, it was of the time period. And I think that is what's going on in this look. I think it does look a little disheveled, but I appreciate it. And I think it's a well done disheveled low updo. Now we have the chignon, uh, 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 however, done well. And a modern type of chignon. This is still elegant. It's still very pulled back and tight and there's not a lot of messiness going on, but it's modern. It feels new. It is still very wrapped. It still looks like a small little turd on the back of her head. The most beautiful turd I've ever seen, you know? <laughs> Um, and I love the bit of crisscrossiness going on above the chignon. And I think it's so great how it's like laying on her neck. It's very low. It's a beautiful style and it's quite timeless in my opinion. This one is even more sleek. This one is a great size. It looks like a small, tiny little croissant you find at a French bakery and they say, we, oui, we, oui, young lady. And you say, thank you. It's elegant. It's timeless. It's beautiful with her hair color. I love the low chignon. It's not too big. It's not over done. They didn't try too hard. This stylist, whoever did this is great. Now, if you really want to live your extra life, maybe try doing the glamour wave. The glamour wave, I think is a amazing choice. It's like an old Hollywood look. I think it is sort of timeless. Some people go really overboard with this one too, but we won't talk about that today. The way it's done in this photo right here is perfect to me. I know some people really want that refined look and I can get with that, but do it right. Do a relaxed wave and have the wave formation all the same and have everything very very uniform, sexy, smooth, silky, shiny. And that's how you do a wave correctly for a wedding. Here is a more tousled version of the glamour wave, but still very much a glamour wave. Um, she has a beautiful amount of body in her hair. I really do like the one side tuck behind the ear. And then she has that really wavy look on both sides of her head. And I think this is just great. I love her hair length. It works perfectly with the dress. And yeah, she can always put one side behind her shoulder and change up the look a little bit, but it's beautiful. And I think it's perfect for the look that she's going for. Now we have the low ponytail. I actually really dig a ponytail. Ponytails are great too because you can really slick back your head and give yourself a facelift with them. High ponies, probably not. You're gonna look like you're out of workout class, but a low pony, it looks special. Add a little bit of texture and a little bit of wave to that. I love the way she has this jewelry in her hair with the little wrap around and it's a very thick ponytail, almost a little bit too thick. I think it's good for her. And I think it looks elegant and classy while still having a down up do. I think it's great for this dress she picked. It's showing her decolletage, but maybe she didn't want all the hair off of her shoulders. So she chose an in-between and I think it's perfect. And this is how you do a great low ponytail. Another great low ponytail. This one's a tiny bit higher. Still think it's great. I like the way they overlapped 
the hair and a little crisscross pattern. Did a soft wave on the ponytail. There's not a heavy amount of extensions in her hair that makes her hair look heavy and like lifeless. Perfect amount of volume in her crown area. And lastly, let's talk about the easygoing bun. This looks like her hair was thrown up, but in the most gorgeous way. You know those days where you throw up your hair and you look in the mirror and you're like, how the f did I just do that? Like, why can't I do that every single day of my life? Why is this the most perfect messy bun I've ever done to myself? That's this bun. Sitting at the perfect height where it isn't too low, it isn't too high. It's still very sleek, but messy. Really says I care, but not too much that I'm not a fun girl and I can't get down on the dance floor at my own wedding. You know, she looks like she can get down. She's gonna shake her ass a little bit and she's gonna go home with her hubby and just, you know, pound it out. Those are my do's. I compiled that list to hopefully inspire you to make better choices on your wedding day. I'm just kidding. Those are just my opinions. Take it or leave it. You don't need to do everything I said, but those are my do's and I love all of those looks. Now that we've discovered all these beautiful, fabulous looks, what's the right look for you on your wedding day? Consider the dress's detail. Is there a lot going on up here? Are there beautiful straps you wanna show off? Or do you just love your decolletage? Do you have the perfect shoulders? Do you wanna put a lot of like shimmer on your shoulders? Do you want to show that off? Do you have jewelry? Maybe do a little chignon. Maybe do something a little bit more edgy, like a messy bun moment. Do you want to do a ponytail, but there's a lot of back detail? Maybe opt for a bun in that situation. Next, you want to choose hair that's going to fit the theme. Are you having a very ritzy, ritzy wedding? Are you spending big bucks? Are you doing a quick on the go wedding? You're going to do your own hair for it. Well, these are all different things you should look at. There's different complexities to each look. Maybe if you're going to do your hair yourself, you do just a very loose beach wave or a very elegant messy bun. Those are pretty easy to do yourself at home and you can totally do it. I believe in you, look up some tutorials or maybe you're doing top dollar spending all this money on your wedding and you have the best hairstylist. Well then see what they can do, ask for their opinion. Maybe do a look that's a little more complicated like some glamor waves or the easygoing bun. What I'm saying is dress for the occasion, even with your hair. If you wanna be glam, be glam. If you wanna be chill, be chill. My next tip is longer is not always better. Better. And I'm talking about hair. Every girl says, I need to grow my hair out for the next two years before my wedding. First of all, there's extensions. You can just tape them in for the night. They look very natural. It's easy. It's cute. But I think having shorter hair for your wedding day is severely underrated. I think a lot of the time the hair is very overwhelming and heavy. It's all around just like a lot to look at and a lot to deal with and looks very uncomfortable. Shorter is sometimes better and less hair is sometimes better. Don't put too many extensions in your hair, please. Don't make it way down and crazy and like, ah, I'm wearing two dead animals on my head. And one of my most important tips of all is to be you. Do what makes you happy. This is your day and your husband's day. Don't forget that. If one of the ugly hairstyles would make you happy, go for it. This is not my wedding. These are just my opinions. Whatever makes you smile, what makes you glow on the outside is all that really matters. So f they opinions and I got your back and I might roast you for it, but at least you were happy. So if you're wondering now, Brad, what would you wear for your wedding day? How would you do your hair? Well, I'm glad you asked, I know. If I was a female with longer hair, I feel like I would just like bohemian beach waves. I wanna look like I didn't try. That's the vibe I would go for. All right, that is all for it today, guys. Don't forget to follow me on all the social media networks, including Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at BradMotoNYC. You can also find my Facebook page and my Snapchat show under Brad Mondo. And I mean, to have beautiful, amazing, fabulous hair on your wedding day, you need beautiful, fabulous, amazing products. And I got your back. You can shop X Mondo hair linked below. Go for it. Have some fun. Do a little shopping. Let me know what you got. You can also follow X Mondo hair on Instagram to stay up to date with new product launches happening all the damn time. And that is all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to live your extra life on your wedding day. And I'll see you next time. Bye guys. This is Glitterati, our styling serum. Glitterati will deliver hold, shine, and lightweight hydration combined with the most beautiful touch of pink sparkle. Glitterati can be used on any hair type or texture. We've also added argan oil and chamomile extract to help strengthen your hair and just make it feel and look luxurious.